Hey there, it's that time of year, soup. I love making soup. It's one of my favorite things to make, partly because it doesn't always require a recipe. If you've been watching my videos, I've done a few at this point. Um, I don't always love to be confined by a recipe. I like to look at a recipe and then add in my own things and put my own twist on it. So soup can be very much like that, I think, for a lot of people. You can throw in a whole lot of things. Today I'm gonna to show you the basics of a lot of soup making that I use, but also making specifically my chicken sausage vegetable soup. It's so yummy, super flavorful. You can eat off of it for days. It's super healthy. Um, I mentioned when I made the Asian chicken sliders in that video that I love a product. It might be a local thing, but it's um, Icernos. That's the maker. It comes in a tube like this. This is their chicken um, Italian sausage and I love it because it's a clean product it doesn't have any of the funky weird stuff in it no nitrates no nitrites um, every ingredient on the ingredients list you know what it is you can pronounce it so nice to work with products like that um, but anyways I love making this soup and I'm going to show you some of my tricks of how I make it just really flavorful and um, just kind of amplify all the things so so I've got my meat going in here and I've just been kind of breaking it up. One of the best tricks I can tell you for developing flavor is when you put your meat into the bottom of the pan, I have a little bit of olive oil down there and then uh, I have it on medium high heat. But when you get your meat down in there, even if you're working with ground beef or turkey, spread the meat out and kind of chunk it up a bit and then leave it alone. That is where the magic happens. All the flavor, the meat will start to naturally caramelize you'll get these little wonderful caramely brown bits on the bottom of your pan, and that is where the goodness is. That's where all that flavor is. So don't rush soup. That's one of the things I would say. You gotta give it a little time to let those layers of flavor develop. So this is step one of Flavor Town, I'm telling you. It's good stuff. Okay, my meat is all browned. I've kind of uh, chunked it up with my little spoon thing here, and I've gotten it, um, you know, all cooked through, which is important. You wanna make sure you do that with any ground meat you're starting with. But next comes what they call in France, the mirepoix. It's just onions, carrots, and celery. Um, this is the base for almost all of my soups, especially vegetable soups that I do. And then from there, whatever you happen to have on hand or what vegetables you like. Today I'm gonna to be using zucchini. Um, I'll do a can of um, petite diced tomatoes because my son doesn't like it too chunky so I do a smaller smaller can and then um, I'll also throw in some shredded cabbage also consider also called coleslaw in the package looks like this coleslaw brand of coleslaw however all it is is uh, shredded cabbage and then it has a little bit of carrot in there for color um, but that adds a nice bulk and I'll add that at the end I'll show you that in a second but the trick with um, this portion of your soup building, uh, you want your vegetables to just be cut similar. If you like a chunky soup, chunk up your vegetables in a bigger form. If you like them um, really fine because you don't like a lot, then you can also cut them smaller. It'll change the cooking time. Definitely if you have like big chunks of carrots versus these, I happen to have some shredded carrots on hand, so that's what I'm using. Um, so I cut everything a little bit smaller to go with that. But you just want even cooking with your veggies. So that's an important thing to consider. So these will go in next into my soup pot. And again, I mentioned you kind of got to let things uh, build and take time to just the flavors to come together. So this is my next layer of flavoring. So I will stir these veggies in with my meat and I'll leave it alone for a good, you know, five to 10 minutes. I will maybe come in and give it a stir halfway through that. Um, but you just want to let it kind of hang out. That's when... Um, you know, your vegetables are cooking down, the stuff on the bottom might be getting a little bit brown, and that's okay, because that's that flavor development. It's called the Maillard reaction, fancy term from culinary school. But all it means is the sugars are being released from the food, it's making a reaction in the bottom of the pan, you get little brown bits and then you scrape them off, and that's just all the good flavor. It's so yummy. So, can't rush soup, but it's worth it, because it has so much flavor. I'll show you. Okay, my veggies are getting super soft. The carrot, celery, and onion, they've been cooking now for about probably seven, eight minutes. And they're starting to just feel a little softer and tender. The onion looks like it's, um, like you can almost start to see through it a little bit. So next up, zucchini. Now I did a bigger chunk on these than I did on my other veggies. Um, zucchini has a ton of water in it. So I do a little bit bigger chunk so they'll actually still see and taste the zucchini in my soup. But that will go in next. 
and from there it kind of is what vegetables do you like so I actually had some um, uh, Yukon gold potatoes left so I've got those over here so I'm gonna put one potato in because I had it left over like I said now if you were somebody who is really trying to watch your carbs um, or you know, you just you just want to keep it like really plain meat and just vegetables, then you don't have to add something like that. Um, I like a little bit of kind of bulk to the to the soup because really the soup is all you're getting for dinner. Maybe a piece of fruit, but that's all I'm going to serve. So I like to give it a little bit more bulk. But you could also do something like rice, or you could do pasta. What I will recommend is if you want to put your rice in, do your rice, um, put it in raw with your liquid when you add that part. Um, if you put it in already cooked, it's just gonna like bloat up. Same thing with pasta. A lot of times I love doing orzo, which actually looks like rice. It's a rice shaped pasta. But if you put it in with your soup and by day two, when you're having leftovers, that stuff is like totally swollen and bloated. So sometimes keep those, keep your pasta or rice on the side, put a scoop of it in the bottom of your bowl, then ladle your soup on top and you'll have like a perfect texture um, when you eat that. So, but I, like I said, I put a little potato in here cause I like that. Um, you know, like that for my soup. Now, one other thing I didn't talk about, garlic. Now, of course, fresh garlic, always a superior product. But when I'm making soup, a lot of times, I am a little bit in a hurry, even though I do let, been patient, let the layers build. This is a product that I get, other stores sell it, but I get mine at Trader Joe's. They're little ice cube trays of frozen minced garlic, you guys. They're brilliant. I use them all the time. If you don't know about them, get them. Each little cube represents a clove of garlic. So I'll pop a couple of those in there, and then this will just go back in my freezer. These also come in like ginger, there's um, minced basil, and also cilantro, at least they used to have that. And that'll just stir right into the soup. You don't add your garlic at the beginning because if it burns, it'll get a little bit of a, not burns, but if it like browns up too much, it gets a little bit of a bitter taste. So that is my next layer, garlic, zucchini, and potato. And at this point, I will also add my can of um, tomatoes and then will come my liquid so I'll show you that in a sec so everything everything's getting nice and soft in there now I'm gonna add my liquid I got my chicken stock and usually with um, this is a pound of meat and I would say about a cup cup and a half each of the onion celery carrot um, and I happen to actually I did chicken stock but I'm actually also doing vegetable broth because I happen to have this I opened it accidentally as the wrong thing for another thing I was making. So, but vegetable broth, chicken broth, either one works, you guys. Um, but you wanna cover your um, your meat and veggies completely, and maybe a little bit then some, because this will sit and bubble and cook down for quite a bit of time. And you really want it to, um, you know, have something to, have something to, you know, lose liquid wise. So you can see stirring it in, it's a little bit liquidy, but when it gets done, it'll be a little bit thicker and heartier than that. The other trick, you guys, is I take uh, whole, uh, whole thyme. This is just a sprig of thyme, and I'll just nestle that right down in there. And then when my soup is done, I'll find the stem and it'll just come right out. The other trick is I add a bay leaf. Bay leaf, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I just always put it in and it gives it good flavor, that's all I know. So it's just a dried leaf. I'll actually do two of them, but anyways, those go in there and they add really good flavor. Okay, last but not least, my coleslaw, which again, no dressing, it's just shredded cabbage with a little carrot, but I'll put about half a bag into my soup pot, bring it up to um, a, like a nice heavy bubble, like not heavy boil, but like, so it's got some bubbles going on, then I'll turn it down to low and it'll just hang out. Um, because I cut my vegetables a little bit smaller, this probably will simmer for minimum about an hour. Um, but sometimes I let my soups go on low for a couple hours and um, they just kind of hang out. But that's where, the, again, those flavors develop. It makes it super, super yummy um, and just gives you a really hearty, rich flavored soup. My favorite thing, again, with soup is just that flexibility. You really have her permission to put what you like. I sometimes do green beans, um, in fact, I found in my in my um, fridge some roasted cauliflower that I um, made the other night, and I'm actually gonna chop that up and throw it in there. So really, you can put what you like. And also, I'll do a heavy amount of um, probably ba dried basil in there. And when I say heavy, like 
one to two tablespoons probably, but you could do um, Italian seasoning, you could do just thyme. Well, I did the regular thyme, but again, you can do dried herbs. I typically do dried herbs, not fresh, but again, still had that package of thyme in my fridge I've been using up from different recipes I've been making. So um, permission given to play with your soup and try different things, um, especially with a meat and vegetable soup. There's just so many directions to go. So, okay, one last thing, soup is all done. Tasting is always important. It's all reduced and all the vegetables are tender and soft. The potatoes are all cooked through. Um, the flavors are just fantastic. Mm. Cozy, yummy, kind of home and hearthy, just delicious. Um, I also forgot to mention salt and pepper. Um, I did put pepper in here. Salt I hold off on until the very end and I taste it. Sometimes that broth is plenty salty. Sometimes I use low sodium, sometimes I use regular, but in this case, I didn't need to add any salt. It was just right. Um, and usually I'll go a little lighter on that salty profile because some people like it really salty. Um, they can always add more, but I get it kind of to my liking, which is, I feel like somewhere in the middle. Um, but give this a try for all my friends in the South. Hopefully you'll be having some fall-like weather soon. Um, but up here in the Northwest, we're ready. It's been a little rainy, a little bit cool and uh, soup is on, so enjoy making this one.